the paleo treats and the keto desserts and the you know all these things are like trying to come up with a version it's yeah. almost like you know beyond meat trying to come up with a piece of yeah. steak that's made out of you know of vegetables yes and no nobody is framing mock meats as healthy they're doing so so that animals don't have to suffer and that we can start to un the world I'd say that's pretty noble, wouldn't you? I think there's real promise in these meats that are made in a laboratory in terms of their cloning meat. And I've seen some of these really strange looking 3D printed steaks, but it's actual animal tissue. Well, yeah, if you want all the animal fats, heterocyclic amines and hemine, etc., that fuel cancer and heart disease, have at it. These meat substitutes that are made with seed oils. Yeah. Uh, just horrible again nobody's claiming that they're healthy to be fair though i would eat vegetable oils over animal fats any day of the week they don't raise serum cholesterol which animal fats very definitely do be they factory farmed free range organic or hunted not only that but there are meat alternatives with little to no added oil i make seitan with zero oil and it's delicious and this is not bacon, it's pretty darn close in texture and taste to the class one carcinogen and it's mimicking. And it has 1.5 grams of fat in the whole pack. There was a study where they fed rats these things and they had horrible, rats eat each other, they eat everything. Yeah. They eat garbage, yeah. they're fine. Yeah. They, no, eat those, no. they eat those fake burgers and they yeah. were sick as I know. You don't know. You're talking about a study where rats were fed massive amounts of the hemine, which is put into Impossible Burgers. Big surprise, they got sick. We've known for years that hemine drives heart disease and cancer. But do you know what else contains hemine? Meat. You're citing a study which proves that meat is very, very unhealthy. It's just nuts that, that the, again, that the collective conscience of the country would rally around something so inane, so, so, so antithetical to health. Well, every legitimate health authority in the world says that meat drives most of our top killer diseases. So you're also describing yourselves there. In the name of saving the climate or saving the animal. Of course. Who wants to consider others, including their own children? I mean, it's not like we don't have a hundred planet Earths, right? Even the cell, you know, the, the matrix lab-grown meat, the cell-based cell, cell -based stuff, still lacks a lot of the nutrients. You know, you have to have the infusion of the capillaries and all of the stuff. Um, no, you don't. The latest lab-grown meats, sadly, are nutritionally the same as standard dead flesh. And anyway, vegetables are 16 times more nutritionally dense than meat. So who cares? You need to clone headless animals with no souls. Yeah. I know where there's a couple of human animals with no souls. But yeah. then they would have to exercise in order to be, like, really <laughs> delicious. That's the thing, like the difference between a wild game animal yeah. and an animal that's stuck in a pen like veal, yeah. which is disgusting. If you really thought the way that veal calves are treated is disgusting, you wouldn't be funding the dairy industry. But yeah, it's sick as f I can't work out how people who know what's going on can still fund its existence. Time to align your actions with your words or just stop pretending that you care. A wild game animal is rich and red and dark and it's it's denser, it's more chewy. It also tastes gross and stinks to high heaven, which is why there's virtually no demand for it. It's a denser, healthier animal. And, and you animal. think you're going to get that from a lab grown? No. No. So, you know, Unless we're back to... You get a headless elk <laughs> okay, and you put I mean, on steroids a, and you have them right, running on a uh, treadmill. <laughs> let's patent that, Jamie. Right, make a note. <laughs> I'm glad that you two can find animal abuse so hilarious. I think, you know, regenerative agriculture is... is the way we need to go to feed the world. Uh, no, that whole argument is based on one flawed industry funded study. They failed to track all the factors and therefore didn't track carbon emissions properly. More recently, a non-industry funded study came out highlighting where they went wrong. No, regenerative agriculture is a complete fairy tale. And however you do it, animal agriculture uses up far too much land and water. If everyone went plant-based, we could solve so many of the world's problems in just one go. It's ridiculous. The people that are skeptical, though, don't think that we could do it at a scale that's necessary to provide as many people with meat as eat meat in this country. The scale in which we're consuming meat in this country because of fast food requires factory farming to keep up with it. Well, for now it does, but, you know, there's, there's got to be a tipping point. There's got to be a point at which... We have to recognize that by, by concentrating everything in our world, not just food, but all of these different concentrations, 
that there is a point at which we can't satisfy people's needs. A minute ago, you said that regenerative farming was the way to feed the world. Now you're contradicting yourself and rightly saying that it can't work because of the scale. Well done. You got there in the end. If there's going to su be any subsidies in agriculture, it should be for... For local small... For local small yeah. farms. That produce healthy whole plant foods that take the strain off the health system. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. One of the big arguments against everyone eating vegetables is monocrop agriculture. Yeah, well, who's the biggest consumer of these crops? A few million vegans? Or the 140 billion farmed animals that currently inhabit planet Earth? You're arguing for veganism again. Everyone, I think, everyone with a moral, with a heart and a, a, a soul agrees that factory farming in terms of animals right. is disgusting. It's horrible. Yep. But I don't think they understand the horrors of monocrop agriculture and how bad it is. Oh, I know exactly how bad it is. According to the actual data, per 1 million calories of grain, an average of 1.5 animals lose their lives. Again, though, what you fail to realize is that monocropping mostly feeds farmed animals anyway. If you really cared about incidental crop deaths, you would be vegan. So then they have to add a bunch of nitrogen to the soil. So what? And they estimate that we have like the United States farmlands have, I believe, 60 more I seasons. Heard, I heard 50, but yeah. Oh, yeah. Who made those numbers up? The animal agriculture industry? This is the argument they always use. We need these monocrop agriculture things to feed animals. Well, no, we don't. No, no. You, we, what you need is natural grasslands. Yeah, I've heard that one before too. Trouble is, it would require three and a half planet Earth's worth of grasslands. So you didn't really think that one through now, did you? Nature always has the best answer. Yep, she sure does. So eat her whole plant foods and leave animals alone, you silly lot. Now click this.